Hey guys, it's Amy Twiggs with Flippin' Awesome Coaching. We are going to be talking about something that I have talked about in the past, actually. I actually talk about it all the time because it's the foundational tool and it's totally worth the review, okay? I want to clarify and I want to define some things a little bit better for, for you guys. I've been working with so many athletes lately and I want you to understand the CTFAR model, okay? It's just one of those things that's foundational tool for everything. It's, I want you to be able to come back to this information often whenever you're struggling with a problem, okay? And I teach all of my group and my individual. I teach everybody based on this. There's a lot of tools that are built on top of it, but this is the foundation. So I've talked about this in the past. You, you, a lot of you probably understand some of it. It's worth clarifying and repeating, okay? All right, so today, um, if you need to divide this up a little bit and listen to little sections of it, go for it. But I want you to have it all in one spot so you can always come back to one spot. Now remember, there's five parts, okay? So it's gonna, all these five parts, your life, it represents everything that exists in your world. And I know that sounds kind of crazy, but it's totally true. There are five parts. There's the circumstances, thoughts, we have feelings, actions, and results, and that's it. Everything about your world can be put into one of those categories. So we're gonna talk about each component often, okay? But I want you to have this one to go back and listen to whenever you need to be reminded of the different parts. So we're gonna define each one. Circumstances, those are literally the facts of the world. These are the things that you don't have any control over. These are the things that are outside of your control, outside of you, they are neutral. You never wanna put anything that describes or a, like opinions or adjectives or adverbs in this line. And I like to call this line the C, the C line. So if I say the C line, I'm talking about circumstances or situations in your life. For example, some of them might be the beam or the bars or the weather. This, I'm talking specifically to gymnasts right now, but you plug in whatever, whatever fits your, your sport, the, the field, the goalpost, the scoreboard, you know, any of that, the basketball, whatever it is, the swimming, um, area. Okay. Your leotard. This is for gymnasts. You can change your circumstance sometimes, but a lot of times you can't change your circumstance. Even if you can change it though, this is interesting because if you, if your leotard's bugging you and you want to change that leotard, then what really changes? You feel better because of your thoughts about the new leotard. The leotard is still a circumstance. So it's kind of cool. It's interesting, right? That we can change our circumstance and we think we feel better because of our circumstance, but it's actually just changing our thoughts, which makes us feel better. So there's also the meets or the competitions, the big games, anything like that, um, championships. Those are all neutral. The judges, the teammates, the coaches, the other people, the, the people and the things other people say about you, what other people say to you. Sometimes people say words that you think will hurt your feelings, and it just doesn't happen like that way, that way I promise. Any words that people say are always neutral. They have no emotions attached to them, okay? Even if they're like yelling at you, sometimes coaches will get really you know, excited and they start yelling, right? Um, if they're crying and then they start saying things because they're feeling disappointment, whatever it is, that's on them. It's always about them, not you. And we like to say that if it can be proven in a court of law where everyone agrees with you, then you can probably assume it's a circumstance, which also includes your past. This is so important in sports. I want you to understand that anything that's happened in your past is just a neutral fact, and it has no power over you. It has no hold over you. You cannot go and relive your past. You only get to think about the past. That's it, your thoughts about the past. So, oh, that was beautiful, huh? Whatever you think about your past will impact how you feel right now. What does that mean? Sometimes athletes think like, I always shake on beam. I can't help it. I don't know what to do. It's just, I always do that. I've always done that. I always do it. If you're agreeing with that, then stop right now, right? Write that, whatever part of that you agreed with, whatever resonated with you and tell yourself the opposite. If you have thoughts like, this is who I am. This is how I've always done things. This is how I've always competed. You know, if I, if I fall at the beginning, then the rest of my routine is terrible. I want you to stop that thought and try to think, what is it like to think the opposite? What if you told your lower brain, yeah, I used to be a person who was shaky on beam, but now I realize that this is all just for fun anyways. 
There's no reason to shake. In fact, I'm learning to become a person who is steady and calm and confident and powerful on Beam. Beam is my friend. <laughs> I love this. I used to actually consider Beam as my friend. I would go pat the Beam and be like, hey, you and me, we're tight, right? Beam, Beam and I are tight and our relationship is growing solid because I choose to think of Beam as a friend instead of an enemy that's trying to shake me off. All right? So your past is a circumstance. They are the neutral things that happen in the world, the data, things that you have no control over, things that people say, like I said, that are totally void of opinion and there's no subjectivity in the circumstances. Remember that. And I've kind of gone over the next component a little bit. So um, if circumstances are void of description, then they are meaningless until we add meaning to them or until we have a thought about them. So that's the second component, all right, which is our thoughts, or I like to say the T-line. The way I think of thoughts is that they are sentences. They're just sentences in your mind. A thought is simply a sentence that you have in your mind about your circumstance. And the circumstances trigger thoughts, and you decide what you will make those triggers mean about you, okay? They are all the causes of our problems. And that's the best news I can give all of my clients, that the thoughts that you're having is what creates your problems. Because those thoughts, those are 100% in your control. This is something you are in control of. Our thoughts give meaning to every circumstance in our life. They give meaning to our world. When you're going through your models, you're going to want to limit your thoughts to one sentence in order for the models to be clear and useful. If you add lots of thoughts to your models, then you're going to have a hard time knowing which one is the most problematic or which one you really want to change. You won't know which thought is causing the feeling that's causing that action, that's giving you that result that you don't want. So use one, one thought, one sentence. Okay, since it's competition season, for many of you gymnasts right now, you might be having thoughts like, I have to win. I hope I don't fall. I really need that all-around score so I can move up to the next level. I really hope my ankle doesn't hurt on my vault or my landings. There are so many people watching me. I hope I can show them my good routines right? Not my bad ones. I just want to be better than I did. I want to do better than I did last week, right? Or I don't want to disappoint my coach this time. These are actual sentences that I've heard from many gymnasts recently. What kind of emotions might be coming from these kinds of thoughts? If you think about that, probably not very useful ones. If you feel like you can't take a breath, like a deep breath, I have clients who will say, oh, Oh, that makes it so I can breathe. Oh, that feels nice. If you feel like you're anxious, you, that you can't take a deep breath, then maybe try on a different thought. Maybe one like, this is all just for fun. I want to show my routines to my family. I like having athletes change should or have tos mm -hmm. or need tos to um, I want to or I choose to. I am learning at each meet what I need to work on to prepare for the next meet and what I want to work on to prepare for the next meet or what I choose to work on, right? Competition is just another day that I get to show how much I love the sport. How does that feel? Or I am capable of focusing on one thing at a time, my cue words, and that is all I choose to do when I'm at the meet this weekend. The rest is up to the judges who are outside of my control. Those kind of sentences might give you a bit more useful emotion that's going to drive action that you want. You want to be sure not to put questions in this line of the model. When you write a question, just answer it and then rephrase it as a statement and that will help you get a more, more clarity. Okay, I just really want you guys to be clear on this one, on this whole model. So the third component is a feeling. And the way I like to think about feelings, and they're just vibrations in the body that are caused by the thought in the mind. They're a product of our thoughts, and they are the reason for everything you're doing, you're, everything you're doing in your sport. Life is about feelings or emotions, and I know that sounds kind of fluffy. All we work for, all we aspire to be, all that you are dreaming about becoming is because of a feeling that you hope to feel when you get there, okay? And the best part of all of that is that every feeling, it's totally available to you right now. You never have to wait for those desired feelings. They're all optional, and they're just waiting for you to enjoy them right now. And they're all driven by your thoughts. That's all. So cool, right? This is one of my favorite tools to help clients apply. 
as these concepts are totally easy to understand, but the application, it takes time and practice and effort. The net positive results are so absolutely worth the work. I am enjoying the process of applying this tool fully in my own life, not fully actually, because I'm, a tool, I'm applying it every day and I have other coaches who help me apply it. I get the privilege of being coached weekly, okay? That's, that's my goal for myself is to always have a coach helping me apply this model in my own life. I get to generate any feeling at any time. It's a skill, just like learning the perfect Akacha on bars or the perfect Yurchenko on vault or the Fuk Lele on beam or triple full on floor. Those feel amazing. Those feel amazing when you excel at them and you perfect them and you master them. I know what each of those feel like. I was blessed with the opportunity to be able to do all those skills when I was a gymnast. But this capability for me is kind of beyond those skills in a different way. It's the power behind all of those skills that you're working on every day. It's the fuel that's driving those actions to get those skills, to get the results that you want. It's everything you want in your sport, everything you want in life, and it's just a feeling. And to learn how to generate that is like the game changer. We always limit our models to just one feeling per sentence in order to clearly illustrate the interaction between our thoughts, our feelings, our actions, and our results. We always want to know why we are getting the results we are getting. This way we know how to change it and we know where our power is. Always choosing one feeling attached to one thought is going to help clarify things. Okay, so whenever you're identifying a feeling, you want to think of one word. You can think of 10 words and you're getting 10 thoughts, but think of one word that accurately describes the vibration, the strongest vibration in your body at that moment. So for example, courage. Courage is one of the greatest emotions that I teach athletes to generate at any time. It takes courage to be willing to try something, knowing that you might fail, and it takes courage to get up again and again and again after trying something 100 times. It takes courage to get the confidence that every athlete wants. Every, all those desires, I just need more confidence, it comes from courage. I teach you how to generate this courage and create it anytime you need in order to be willing to take the action that you will have to take if you want to win that gold medal or that championship competition. Okay, okay let's go on. The fourth component is action. That is our behavior or what we do, what we don't do, how we react. It's what we do when we are feeling a feeling. It can be what we do or the inaction because of a feeling. Sometimes we, we balk, right? Maybe we don't do something that we normally do because of a feeling. This is like a gymnast balking or hesitating on a skill that she's mastered, but just suddenly stops going for it. This is, you know, the <laughs> this is the action line. This is the A line. It's what most, most athletes believe will make them feel good. Here's something fun. I love when gymnasts say I've lost the skill and they've mastered it and then all of a sudden they lost it. It's so, it's awesome to be able to help gymnasts go, wait, that's not a problem. We got that. I'll help you find it. It's just in your back pocket. This is how you do it. Okay. Super easy. I hear athletes say, if I just work harder, then I'll feel happier. If I just win that gold medal, then I'll feel like I did enough, that I, that I can feel good enough. If you look at the model and you think about it, that is not the right order. That is backwards. You can never do enough things, practice enough hours, flip enough series on beam, or win enough medals at any competition to feel good enough, to feel that you are you know, happier, right? You wanna feel good enough, and that's gonna find, that feeling's gonna drive the action that you need to be successful. Okay, in the A line, Having said that, that's the biggest part of the model. And I talk about this a lot with my athletes. It's um, you want to write as many things as you can that are coming from the feelings. If you want results, you're going to need to write down as many actions as you can to try to obtain those results. This is the bulkiest section of the model. We call this area the massive action, which means you just do whatever you need to do to get the results you want. You add more actions until you get the result. Something didn't work, you try something else, okay? You tried 100 things, there's got to be 100 more until you find the action that gets you the consistent, confident, powerful result that you want. But know that your actions are always coming from how you feel about your circumstances. This line is where you learn the value of failing, which I also call learning, because a master at failing is becoming that is the fastest way to success that I know. We talk about failing often with my athletes it, that I work with. 
it's important to understand what it is and why it's so important and how to learn to love the value of failing, which is just a missed expectation or required action. No big deal, right? Okay, last component to the model is our results. Results are always the effects of our actions. It's what happens in our world. It's our life because of the action we took. It cannot have anyone else in this line. You can't put somebody else in the line because it's never about anybody else. We can't create the results for other people. We wish we could. We have thoughts for other people and we feel for other people, right? Well, we feel for ourselves, but we have thoughts where we wish we could, um, you, especially at parents of athletes. Parents often wish they could buy that medal for their athlete, that they could do whatever they needed to help their athlete believe in themselves enough so they can get the result they want, right? We watch you athletes compete and you're, we're in the stands praying that you're going to be safe but also that you're going to perform for that win that you have worked so hard for and dreamed about achieving. We all feel a desire to live someone else's life for them sometimes, or at least sometimes I do. Okay. We root for those ones that work so hard and have been the un underdog for so long. We want them to win and we're sending out our positive thoughts and energy their way, hoping it will make the difference for their success. Okay. So listen, I'm a member of the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and we believe that we can pray and fast and do these things for the benefit of others. And I've had many instances where I found that to be super true in my own life because of the faith and the prayers and the fast of other people. I have felt an added power and strength because of those people in my life. At least those are my thoughts and my beliefs, okay? However, in the CTFAR model that we're talking about here, and for this purpose, I want you not to put anybody else in your R line, okay? You're creating your own results. Nobody else will be living your life for you. Nobody else will be on that podium wearing that medal for you. Nobody will be generating the thoughts to create that courage required to take the massive action, especially when you have thoughts that make you feel like you want to give up and quit. Nobody's going to be realizing those dreams for you, okay? When you quit, they're not going to get up there and do it for you either. Now, once you've filled out the model, you have to... Um, if you've limited it to one sentence and one feeling and whatever actions come from that feeling and the results that come from those actions, then the results will always, always be proof of your thoughts. The result is evidence for your thoughts. Your, your brain's looking for evidence. Those results are the evidence for you to continue to believe whatever you're believing. It's the self-fulfilling prophecy that we are taught about in our psychology classes. The clearer your model, the easier it will be to see how all those pieces align to to make, to create your own results in your life. Okay. And it's going to make sense. Each component by their definition, remember each one of them, and it's going to make it so that you can see what's happening in your life. You can plug each one into the correct spot in the model and the circumstances. Just remember this. The circumstances are always the facts. The thoughts are always the sentences. Feelings are always vibrations, actions are our behavior, and results are the effect of your actions. And the results always prove your thoughts, okay? They're proof for your thoughts. Then you can see how these things interact with each other. That is the CTFAR model, and that was created by my master coach, Brooke Castillo. So just start, simply start with a question like, what is the problem? And then you can start filling in the model from there. Let's give you one thing. So let's say you're frustrated. Okay. I like to use this one. It's quick and easy. You would put the feeling, the feeling of frustration in the feeling line. And in order to get the thought that's causing it, you will ask yourself, why are you frustrated? You know, it's super easy. Your answer to the question will give you the thought. Then whatever that thought is, whatever it's about is going to give you your circumstance. Okay. Then you're going to fill in the action line. So ask yourself, when I feel this way, what do I do? When I feel frustrated, what do I do? This is what you will put in the action line. And then when you do that thing, what do you create? What happens for you? And then once you've done all those things, answered all those questions, you're going to see what the cause of your frustration is. The cause is always going to be a thought, which is always optional. You have 100% control over your thoughts and the results will prove your thoughts. You are thinking, feeling, and creating your current result. There's a lot of stuff right now, guys, that I just offered you. It's powerful. It can change your life. And I'm going to be breaking it down and talking about it continuously because it makes the difference for everything. Applying this model changes your experience in life. I teach my clients how to apply this model every in every area of their life. 
as they go through my program. When you insert a new thought, your whole experience changes and the results in your life change. So whether you feel stuck or frustrated or confused or upset or discontent or you know, hesitant, whatever it is that you want to change, it can go in this model and you can put that information in those right places and ask yourself the questions to fill in the entire model. You're going to see that you're creating your result and how you can change it to be anything you want. The next step is practice it. Just like anything worth doing, you will have to take time to practice this model, to see the difference in your life and in your athletic career. You want some help becoming emotionally independent and learn how to manage your mind this season? Schedule a quick call on flippinawesomecoaching.com. Let's get you competing at the level that you've prepared for and reaching for so much more. Okay, you guys, have a flippin' awesome week. Good luck in your competitions this week, and we will talk to you soon. Bye.